the natural realms of the earth. Realms or areas which have some common features. We have four natural realms on the earth. Lithosphere, Hydrosphere, Atmosphere, Biosphere. Lithosphere. It is the solid crust or the hard top part of the earth. It is made up of rocks and minerals covered with a thick layer of soil. Litho means stone or rock and Spira means spear or ball. It has high mountains, plateaus or highlands, low plains, deep valleys and very deep basins which are filled with water. Many of these features are shaped by wind and water. Hydrosphere The realms of water is called hydrosphere. In Greek, kudar means water. It comprises various sources of water and different types of water bodies like rivers, lakes, seas, oceans, etc. Some part of the water is found deep down under the earth among rocks. Atmosphere The thin layer of air that surrounds the earth is atmosphere. It is a combination of two Greek words, atmos means vapor. It consists of a large number of gases including oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, water vapor, dust particles, etc. Biosphere The realm of life including bacteria which live high on atmosphere or in deep oceans consisting the biosphere. From Greek word, bios means life. All forms of life have an integral connection with the land, water and air. We will study about first realm lithosphere in greater detail. Landforms Lithosphere deals with the land we live upon. Geographers as the first order, landforms are the primary division of the Earth's crust into oceans and continents. The surface of the continents is not even. They have plain lowlands, plateaus and high mountains but are also in a way a result of the internal process of the earth. These landforms like mountains, plains and plateaus are called second order landforms. The zigzag puzzle and the moving plates. Scientists thought that in the beginning probably all continents were held together and how they broke up and gradually drifted and came to their present places. There were about seven major plates on the earth and several minor ones. The major plates are African, North American, South American, Indian, Australian, Antarctic, Eurasian and Pacific plates. The minor plates are Nazca, Arabian, Caribbean, etc. These plates actually float on the mantle. They are constantly being pushed and therefore keep moving slowly that we can't feel the movement. The region where the two plates meet and push each other, a lot of pressure is exerted by each of them on the other. One plate is pushed under into the mantle while the other plate is pushed up to form a chain of mountains. This movement of plates is called plate tectonics. Seafloor spreading. These are formed by lava rising up from the mantle. The eruptions on the ridge create new ocean floor made of basalt rocks which then spreads laterally from the ridge. The mid-ocean ridges contain the newest crust formed on the planet. This fresh crust is being slowly pulled away from the ridge widening the ocean basin.
Drama at the margins. The margins of the plates or the boundaries where the plates meet are the sites of the highest geologic activity. In fact, the incoming plate actually goes into the mantle of the earth and becomes molten due to the heat of the mantle. For example, the Indian plate pushes the Eurasian plate and goes under it just where the Himalayan mountains are. Slow movements and sudden movements. The slow movements leading to the formation of the crust, movement of the continental plates and their eventual return to the mantle. The sudden and dramatic eruption of volcanoes and the earthquakes. Sudden movements can be destructive and cause much damage. At the same time, they also lead to changes in landforms. Volcanoes. Volcanoes are places on the Earth's surface where molten material form and the mantle erupts on the Earth's surface. The smoke, ash and dust spreads out in the atmosphere while the molten materials cool and form hard rocks called igneous rocks. Lava may not reach the surface and may cool under the surface and became rocks are called intrusive landforms. A part of the lava which pours on the surface of the Earth forms the extrusive landforms. Pacific Ring of Fire Geologists noted the high number of earthquakes and volcanic activity occurring around the Pacific Rim, the edge of the Pacific Ocean Basin. The theory of plate tectonics provided the explanation for this pattern. It is along these plate boundaries that many volcanoes and earthquakes occur, giving it the name the Pacific Ring of Fire. External processes External forces like water and air are working vigorously to wear away the surface and the interaction. These external processes on one hand wear away the surface of the rocks and mountains. Then they transfer the worn out particles and deposit them in lowlands and basins. This shaping of the landforms by wind and water are called third order landforms by geographers. Processes like weathering, erosion, transportation and deposition are largely responsible for these landforms. It is known as denudation process. The lowlands what we see today were once mountains and plateaus. Landforms continuously keep on changing due to denudation activities which is a continuous process. The structure of mountains, plateaus and plains keep on changing through process known as erosion cycle or geomorphic cycle. How air and water transform the surface of the earth? The hard primary rocks are broken into smaller pieces which are cut off from the parent rock and carried lower down to the other places and deposited there. This process is formally defined as follows. Weathering, Erosion, Transportation, Deposition Weathering the gradual disintegration of rocks by atmospheric forces or weather forces. The rocks when exposed to heat expand and contrast when cool down. As surface rock contracts, expands and contracts again, it gradually becomes brittle and begins to break down. Water reacts with the chemicals of the rocks and further weakens the rock. These process by which the rocks are weakened and broken are called weathering. Erosion 
Flowing water and wind have great power and can slowly wear away or cut away the rocks and soil cover in higher places. Water acts in many ways as rain, river, flowing groundwater, sea waves, glaciers, etc. Wind to takes many forms like storms, gusts, steady winds, etc. The active wearing away of the earth's surface by these moving agents is called erosion. Transportation The erodes material in the form of small rocks, gravel, mud, fine soil, etc. carried by winds and water is called transportation. Rivers and winds and even waves cut soil and rocks from one place and take them to distant places, sometimes hundreds of kilometers. Deposition When the rivers and winds slow down, they do not have the force to carry the material anymore and they dump them. This dumped debris help to form plains and river basins. Much of it is actually transported by rivers to the sea, where layer after layer of these deposits accumulate in the bottom and over time get transformed into sedimentary rocks. Work of water The work of river begins from its very source in the high mountains. The flow of a river is very swift as it descends the steep slopes and it exerts a great force in cutting the mountain vertically. As a result, a deep valley develops, narrow at the bottom and wide at the top. This is usually called a V-shaped valley. In some cases where the rocks are very hard, the river cuts a very narrow valley, the sides are so steep that gorges are formed. In Andhra Pradesh on the Godavari, Indus Gorge in Kashmir are examples. A gorge is almost equal in width as its top as well as bottom which are suitable for construction of dams. Another important erosion form is canyon. A canyon is characterized by steep like side slopes and may be as deep as a gorge. The water falls with great force and dig out the rock beneath to form a plunge pool. As the river enters the plain, the slope is gentle and the river also slows down. Now it does not have the force to carry heavy particles and deposits them on the banks or on its bed. Sometimes when the river is in flood, it has greater force and cuts the soil and when it is not in flood, it deposits silt. This is how vast flood plains like the Ganga plain or the Krishna Godavari plains were made. When the flood water comes again, the river bed may have become too high as a result of the deposition, it changes its course and cuts new path. This results in the river constantly changing its course in a plain. In its flood plain, the river often forms meanders, gentle turns like a snake. Due to deposition along the sides of the meander, the ends of meander loop comes closer and closer. In due course of time, the meander loop cuts off from the river and forms a cut-off lake which is called Oxbow Lake. When a river reaches the sea, the fine material which has not yet dropped is deposited as its mouth forming a delta. Work of glaciers accumulates ice, flows slowly down till reaches warm area where the ice melts and a small river starts. Slow moving of mass of ice is called glacier. A glacier erodes through a process called plucking in which it lifts pieces of rock and transports them. Through this dual process of plucking and abrasion, glaciers create a U-shaped valley. As the glacier melts and becomes water, it does not have the force to carry the large rocks which it leaves behind in the form of huge rugged boulders. Smaller particles and pebbles are left on the bed of the glacier. The glacier brings with it small pebbles, cobbles, sand, etc. are known as till. 
The till which cannot be carried by a glacier is deposited at various parts of the glacier. The deposition of this till is called moraines. Work of waves The erosion and deposition by the sea waves gives rise to coastal landforms. Waves continuously strike at the rocks. Cracks develop in them and halo-like caves are formed on the rocks. As these cavities become bigger and bigger, only the roof of the caves remains thus, forming sea arches. Further erosion breaks the roof and only walls or left are called stacks. The steep rocky coast rising almost vertically above sea water is called sea cliff. When sea cliffs weather, further they form rugged capes and bays. A cape is head land cutting out into the sea. A bay is wide mouth and dresses in the line of the coast. Work of wind. Wind is a dominant agent in the hot desert. About one fifth of the world land is made up of deserts. Strong winds carry sand and fine soil which strike the large rocks. These two act as abrasive sandpaper and erode the hard rocks. The wind action creates a number of interesting erosional and depositional features in the deserts. Mushroom rocks. Winds erode the lower section of the rocks more than the upper part. Therefore, such rocks have narrower bottom and wider top. In Silberg, the isolated residual hills rising abruptly from the ground are called Inselberg or Island Mountain. They are characterized by their very steep slopes and rather rounded tops. Sand dunes. Due to weathering and persistent wind action, there is a large accumulation of fine sand in many deserts. These form sand dunes. These are unstable hills of sand which move with strong winds. Yellow colored sand in desert is very fertile. This is called loess. Loess is in fact fine loam, very coherent and extremely porous. Action of vegetation and human beings. They contribute to the weathering of rocks by driving roots into fine cracks or holes in the rocks. They also enable water and moisture to enter into the rocks which further enable weathering. On the other hand, the plant or grass cover on soils prevent easy denudation or transportation of soil by wind or water. Human beings, especially after the Industrial Revolution, have had a major role in transforming the crust on which we live.